All right. Hello, uh, this is Tom Fournier from the History Symposium, and we're doing uh, another little recording for what's in your collection and doing this via Zoom. But we have a, a special guest in, in Sarah, but also the, the object she's going to highlight. So, Sarah, why don't you introduce yourself first? Sure. My name is Sarah Kaufman. I'm the managing director and curator of what is now called the Niagara on Lake Museum, formerly called the Niagara Historical Society and Museum. Excellent. And what is it you have there? This is Brock's hat. This is our uh, one of our most prized possessions that uh, are from the War of 1812 collection. So we've got Brock's hat. I've tried to kind of show it a little bit. It's hard to show, obviously, on uh, on camera. But yes, Brock's hat. So and that would be Major General Sir Isaac Brock, who famously died at the Battle of Queenston Heights in October of 1812. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Now, did he ever wear this hat? He did not. Uh, but I always like to say, you know, he kind of wore it on his casket for two of his two, two of his uh, funeral services. So uh, Brock had about four funeral services. And so the hat uh, arrived after he died at the Battle of Kingston Heights. He ordered it long before then. And uh, but it did uh, show up for his caskets for, you know, his funeral procession to the first uh, Brock's Monument and to the second Brock's Monument as well when it was replaced. Excellent. You know, it's funny. Uh, I visited your museum a little bit earlier, um, I guess late November, and then took a couple pictures of it and posted it online. And, and people started debating the the age of the hat in, in terms of the British um, clothing warrants or dress regulations. So I think one of the irony is by time he would have received the hat if he had lived. He probably would have been ordering a new one already because it was it was out of fashion. So. Yeah, I think there's a, actually a letter to his brother in 1810 where he talks about, you know, his things arriving, but his cocked hat hadn't arrived yet uh, and being very frustrated with that because he had such a big head that he couldn't find uh, someone to make him a hat for his head size here in Canada. Um uh, over on this side and and he had to order this hat from London so uh it took him quite a while obviously when it arrived after the war or after he died at the Battle of Queens and Heights that's two years like that's quite a uh, long time so no doubt some things had changed by then yeah well Federal Express didn't exist back then <laughs> <laughs> yeah. overnight delivery so all right and then um Brock never wore the hat, but there's lots of stories of others who may have. What, what can you tell us about that? Yes. Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned, the, the hat arrived a little late and apparently the militia men at the time uh, all tried it on, of course, because uh, it's the uh, their major general's hat. So they were all trying it on. So there was some wear and tear on the hat from, from mostly from that. And then apparently at the funeral, it used to be passed around as well. At each of the funerals, it was passed around. It was brought to the, you know, from the family. The family probably wore it. Uh, and by the family, I mean the Ball family. So the Ball family is the one who ended up with the hat um, after um, the he died. So I should go back a little bit. So Brock died. The hat was given to, uh, I believe it was his nephew who was stationed at Balls Falls here in Niagara. And uh, they he ended up giving it to the Ball family as sort of a thank you for hosting their regiment. And uh, the Ball family is who actually donated it to the museum in 1897. Uh, so we do have a, a long history with this piece. It's one of our very first pieces. The museum, uh, the society started in 1895. So the fact that this one showed up so early in 1897 is quite significant. So that's a little bit of a backstory for you. But um, so, yeah, you know, it, it was worn by a number of people trying it on. And then, of course, when it gets into the hands of the museum, it, that stopped. But it doesn't stop all the requests that I get to wear it. And no, I have never worn it. <laughs> no, I won't let anyone else wear it. There was a nice little documentary with a gentleman from CBC who wanted to wear it. And I said, no. <laughs> All right, then, then I know better than, than to ask if I could wear it. So, <laughs> All right, that's great. And then is it always on display? It is. Yeah, it is one of our uh, our star pieces from our, our War of 1812 collection. Uh, we have an amazing War of 1812 collection here at the museum. 
probably because our organization started so early and Janet Carnahan really actively um, advocated for 1812 pieces from local families, of course, because uh, Niagara Lake was the British headquarters in this area in Upper Canada. So um, during the time. And uh, so we, we have quite an amazing collection. We have it on display all the time for people to take a look at along with the hat box. So it comes with the hat box as well. Excellent. Well, I think that just about wraps us up. So thank you so much. Um, maybe if you can just say once again, the, the name of the museum and, and maybe highlight when it's open. Yeah, so uh, it's the Niagara Lake Museum. We're open in our winter hours or one to five every day. And the summertime starting in uh, May, we are 10 to five every day. Well, Come I'll down and see it. <laughs> I'll certainly be back and then hopefully you can pull some more of your, your prized items out and I can see even more of these War of 1812 I would, treasures. I would love that. And anytime anyone wants to know a little bit more about this hat, I'm always happy to answer it. It's been heavily researched, of course. Excellent. Thank you so much, Sarah. You're welcome.